meeting was posted on the township's website consistent with Act 15 of 2020. The agenda for this meeting was also posted on the website at ebrandywine.org forward slash agenda center. The agenda is also visible on your screen. Board members Jason Winters and Kyle Scrivener, as well as township staff, including myself, are physically present in the township building for this meeting. Vice Chairman George Sherbach is unable to participate due to health reasons. Members of the public can hear us, but your own phones and computer microphones are muted, so we cannot hear you. To enable an organized meeting, we're using the following procedure. As with in-person meetings, I ask that all participants wait to be recognized by Chairman Winters before speaking and that all comments be directed to the chairman. To be recognized, you must first ask me in my, mo in my capacity as moderator of this webinar to unmute your audio connection. You may request this at any time via the chat feature, which is located on the left-hand side of your screen. The next agenda item this evening is public comment on agenda items. This is different than our usual sequence of events, so I wanna draw your attention to that fact. If you want to address the board on any topic on the agenda this evening, please begin, address, uh, begin messaging me now. Each person recognized by the vice chairman should state their name and their address before asking a question. I'll now turn the meeting over to Chairman Winters. Good evening. Welcome to East Bramline Township Board of Supervisors regular session, Thursday, November 19th. Start out with public comment on agenda items. Luke, is, have you received any? I see no parties requesting to be recognized by the chairman. Okay. That being said, then we'll move on <clears throat> to adopting a new order of business, replacing the resolution eight of 2001. Luke, did you want to? Uh, yeah, th this is me. As I briefly alluded to in my opening remarks, the agenda is a little different order this evening. Um, there are four changes. Um, would you, um, quite frankly, the, um, if it doesn't meet with the board's approval, I don't have an alternate version of this agenda. So I, I do hope this meets with the board's approval. We had we had briefly discussed making changes to our sequence. Um, in 2001, by resolution eight, the board of supervisors adopted a standard order of business. Um, our solicitor, uh, Mark Jonas, has advised the board that changes to the sequence of the standard agenda can be done just by mutual agreement among the board it isn't necessary to pass another resolution. There are four changes to the sequence, and I'd like to if you, summarize them if you will indulge me. Um, first up, as I mentioned in my intro, the very top, the, the public comment section at the beginning is now public comment on agenda items for the meeting, as opposed to public comment on non-agenda items. I think this is a bit more intuitive. Um, uh, also new is item number five, which is now separated from the standard staff committee and reports. Um, it reflects that the treasurer's report is actually two actions by the Board of Supervisors. One is to acknowledge receipt of the treasurer's report, and the second is to authorize the payment of um, checks shown on your second report. And in your printed packets, the report that represents the checks to be paid is the yellow pages in your packet. Third change is that uh, header number six for staff and committee reports can be now consolidated into a single action item. If the board has a agenda that is very long, you can by consent adopt all six reports with a single motion. So the configuration allows for the adoption of the reports with a single motion. And then lastly, the change is that the planning commission minutes uh, now appear in the staff and committee reports instead of under uh, what is shown on your agenda as for the adoption of minutes of the board of supervisors. 
does the new um, agenda order meet with the board satisfaction? I, um, I personally like it. I'm at first on the agenda if they wanted to kind of. Yeah. Yeah. We're good. All right. Staff will be presenting future agendas in this sequence. <clears throat> and we're going to table the uh, minutes of October 10th that was actually previously tabled on November 5th, uh, due to um, Kyle was not uh, at that meeting and George is not here, so we don't have a quorum for that vote. So let's go ahead and go to the treasurer's report and the authorization to pay bills. Okay, so um, uh, about a month ago now, we appointed uh, Lisa Vlitis as secretary treasurer. She's joining us remotely, and she can read the um, uh, the individual uh, account balances into the record if you would like. Otherwise, I would respectfully ask the board for a motion to accept the treasurer's report and to pay the bills shown on the report before you that is on yellow sheets of paper. And um, I'll make a motion to approve the um, payment of the bills as the as illustrated in our treasurer's report. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Moving on, we'll, we're going to go ahead and combine the staff and the committee I'm, reports. Uh, pardon, pardon the interruption. I know um, we had a we, we we discussed consolidating these and, and and we'd actually briefly touch base with many of the individuals that had consolidated reports at the time i was unable to reach um uh, uh east brandywine fire company representative joe edwards and he has indicated that um he would like to say a few comments so sure. my respectful suggestion to the board would be a, a motion to adopt the committee reports item 6a through 6e uh, as a as a as a consent item, and then I would encourage um, Mr. Edwards, who I'm having trouble promoting to be a speaker, to dial into the one eight hundred number in the lower right screen of his screen. I'll work with him to get him connected. Apologies for the technical problems. Eight six e. Okay. So I'll make a motion to accept uh, the committee reports for October 7, twenty twenty, Planning Commission Township Manager's Report. The building inspector's report, the roadmaster's report, and the East Brandywine Township Police Department report for October 2020. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> and then, uh, are we able to get a hold of uh, the fire company's uh, fire marshal, Joe Edwards? I'm working on it. Okay. You want to return to that? We can return. Sure. Okay. Um, let's let's move on to old business. The proposal for the refinance of the general obligation bond series 2012. 2017. And I believe this would be Mr. Wolf if you are available to pop in for us now online. 
Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. So go ahead, Mr. Wolf. All right. Um, Luke's going to help me <clears throat> by sharing a presentation booklet uh, that I prepared. Um, I'll, I think I'll give you the, the very short version and, and then answer questions. I think the most important uh, page in the booklet uh, is, we'll start with option one. <clears throat> I think you'll like page seven with some yellow highlights on it the best. This is the option to refinance both the 2012 and the 2017 bonds. We keep them separate because they're paid for from separate revenue streams. And we do not extend the term of either loan. We're staying within the boundaries when they were first established. Refinancing the older bonds um, saves about $20,000 a year over the remaining life out to 2030. So that's 10 years. The gross savings over the life is about 194,000. But since some of the savings comes 10 years from now, <clears throat> we discount that and say it's really worth to you in present day dollars 182,000, which is a little bit more than 3% of the refunded principal. Uh, GFOA, the Government Finance Officers Association, suggests that when you have more than 2%, this is net after all costs of issuance, that you should consider a refinancing. The On the right-hand side of the slide are bonds that were used uh, to support uh, a sewer project. There's about between eleven and fifteen thousand dollars of savings available without extending the term. That um, one hundred ninety thousand equivalent is equivalent to a little over five percent, and the same um, the same rule holds. So it's both of these are above the threshold normally used by townships like yourself. Um, the 2017 bonds are not yet callable. They can't be taken away from the bondholders until 2022. Therefore, we're suggesting the use of taxable municipal bonds, and that's what's producing the savings. We are suggesting you not wait until 2022 because interest rates may be higher. They Right now, interest rates are as low as they've ever been since Ike Eisenhower was elected president in the early 1950s. So about 50, 70 years. <clears throat> um, let me pause there just for a second and ask if there are any questions. Yeah, I think I'm good. All right, if we move forward two pages, Elected officials are often interested in what the upfront costs of issuance are. And I've made an estimate here on page nine. Hey, Luke, can you pop that to page nine for us? One more. So I, I'm anticipating uh, costs of about $135,000. There's not really much of a way around this. A lot of these services are, you know, like the ones provided by the rating agency and the printers and things like that. They're, they're kind of like what they are. There's not a lot of room for negotiation. Um, the largest um, fee on there is the fee paid to the underwriter. That's me. And we're charging 0.75 of 1% which is very similar to the rate that we've charged the township for the last 20 years. <clears throat> it hasn't changed. Now, whenever we do an issue like this that involves 63,000 of fixed costs that are paid no matter what the size of the issue is, we always ask the township 
do you have any other capital projects that are on the drawing board at this time? We always ask. And, and this time, the township suggested that there was a capital project for about $500,000, and that's shown on page 11. There you see a column called new money. In yellow is highlighted $500,000. You'd have to issue just a little bit more than that and pay its share of the cost of issuance. Um, if you advance to the next, to pay, uh, page 13, you see on the left that the, the annual debt service on that new project would be around $40,000 a year. Again, uh, interest rates are very, very low. And we have to ask you if you are interested in, in doing this because the incremental cost is very low and the new money project absorbs its fair share of the cost and actually increases the savings by a few thousand dollars over what it would be if you just did the standalone refunding. And that's shown on the page right before this on page 12. You can see that it looks just like the last page we looked at, but the savings are up a few thousand on each column. I think that's enough for me for the moment, just to uh, get a feel from you. If you take a look at page 16, though, I think that's a good one just to close out my presentation because it shows what interest rates have done for the last 10 years. And you can see that they're almost off the bottom of the page. I've had to extend the uh, axis lower to, to, to accommodate the rates, which uh, just a little while ago were 2.02% for a high quality 20 year bond. So let me pause and ask you if you have any questions. Um, I do not. I, I guess the only quick question that I had is uh, you stated earlier that our bond wasn't callable until 2022, I believe. Yes, right. One of the bonds is not callable until 2022. So and what you do, go I'm ahead. Sorry. What would, what would the new bond be? When would that be callable? The new bonds that you're going to issue, we're only you know, going to issue this one set of bonds because you're going to stay under $10 million. The bonds will be callable. The new bonds will be callable in five years. Got it. That's what I was curious. Thank you. Um, according to the new time schedule, which uh, Luke has, we would – Rush, if you like, we could uh, hustle along and we could uh, be ready to uh, sell bonds in December uh, around Christmas. And if we get the cooperation of the rating agencies, it's going to take us about a month to get a new rating for, for the township. But um, in any case, the bonds can't settle. DCED needs almost a month to approve everything. The bonds won't settle until late January. So these bonds will be called the series of 2021. Even though we start in 2020, we don't finish until 2021. And that's the red square in January, late, late January. <clears throat> So I guess um, all I'm looking for is direction from the elected officials um, as to what you wish me to do. I think um, this, I think I'm going to go ahead and follow the the recommendation of the budget committee and say that I think it's a good idea to go ahead and refinance the bonds, but I don't I don't. I think that's a good idea right now to include a um, public works capital project just due to the, the um, you know, uncertain times and, and really just kind of understand that whole proposal, that whole project a little bit better. I don't know about you, Kyle. 
how, how you feel. Yeah, we had had this discussion the other day, and um, I was on the minority on this one. So I think um, I think we're going to have to just go ahead and do the um, at this time the ne the uh, necessary. So that sounds like option one, which is the you know refunding by itself. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I I um, well I don't want to I don't want to guess. You have in the past used uh, the firm of. Lamb, Macarlane, and Westchester as your bond counsel. You don't have to tell me tonight, but you do have to eventually decide whether you're going to use them again or pick a new one. Okay, I think it's something we can we can speak to Mark about and then get back to you and have have him, um, you know, him or. Uh... Yes, um, it's common for the townships to consult with a solicitor okay. on this. All right, great. Well, thank you very much for your presentation and preparing these um, exhibits for us. All right. I'll be glad to uh, do my work, and I look forward to working with you. Um, obviously, if you have questions from time to time, I, I would encourage you to contact me, and you're welcome to, you know, I think the easiest thing for you is to get, is to get Luke to get me the questions, and I'll get you the answers. Okay, great. Luke, do you need a motion on this? You know, I, I'd actually defer, uh, Zach, I don't mean to put you on a spot. Um, uh, I, I think that this is probably not an action that requires a vote. Sorry, can you repeat that, Luke? You said you think that this is not something that, re that requires a vote? Uh, I, I think this is um, it, it, advice to proceed with preparing a, uh, um, a, a formal action item, not in and of itself something that requires an action item. Yeah, I agree. I will add that um, a lot of townships do it this way, the way you're doing it, because there's going to be an ordinance that's going to have to be advertised in accordance with the Debt Act. Uh, and you're going to vote on that ordinance, um, you know, next month sometime. And that's when you would do a, a formal vote. OK, great. Thank you for that information. All right. I think I have my marching orders. and. I, I'm on a new platform. Um, this is my third Zoom of the day, but this is a new platform for me, and with Luke's help, I got it to work. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Wolf. It only took two weeks. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, take into account the uh, lack of technical skills of the presenter. Thank you, man. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, on the subject of tef technical difficulties, I'm now pleased to announce that agenda item 6F, which was the East Brandywine Fire Company report, um, I, I now have um, um, uh, Mr. Edwards on the line by phone. Um, Mr. Edwards, you will need to hit star six to unmute your phone. Hi there. Can you hear us? Hey, good evening, gentlemen. Thanks for your patience. Can you guys can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, first of all, the East Brain Wine Fire Company uh, wants to send out best wishes to Supervisor Sherbach. Our hopes are with him that he's able to return to full health, and our thoughts and prayers are with him. Um, I wanted to get in prior to the supervisors voting on the agenda item to consolidate all of the reports. Uh, to a one pass through vote. Uh, unlike the other entities that are listed in the report area, uh, when we come to the township meeting as East Brandywine Fire Company, it is a chance for us to highlight our successes throughout the township and make the supervisors aware each month of what we have going on at the fire department, what we have going on throughout the township. And I don't know if you can amend that report and not selfishly wanting to, but I think it's important that the fire company be heard. We're not each time, we're not up there each day like the other entities are and not accessible to the supervisors on a routine daily basis. And I think it would be a uh, consideration on your guys' part to allow the fire company to still present a report each month. Uh, if you know, I present the numbers to you folks 
And then I kind of at least two or three or four areas of highlights uh, each month. I think it's important for the citizens of East Brandywine and the supervisors to be able to hear at least what the fire company is doing other than a piece of paper report pass through. And I'll allow you guys to comment on that. Hey, uh, Joe, real quick, we were just letting you know, um, we did a round table for the parties ahead of time and we couldn't get through to you. So um, that's exactly what we did. We asked if anybody wanted to to do the report live today. Oh, so I, I guess I might have misunderstood what your vote was then, Kyle. I'm sorry. I, I was understanding that the vote was is that moving forward with your new agenda that you approved, that we wouldn't be heard from on a monthly basis. You would just pass through uh, the report. Well, I think Jason and I were thinking that um, we would we would have the reports, and if somebody wanted to be heard, then obviously the time is theirs. Um, and that's, I think, the way that we were going to handle this is do a roundtable in the beginning of the meeting to find out if if the police chief or the roadmaster or even the building inspector had anything that they needed to comment for the meeting. But um, tonight, it was just so happened you were the only one that, that needed to be heard. So that's all. Um, that that. That's great, but I guess I, I should just leave it at this thing, Kyle, that each month you might want to anticipate hearing from us live uh, from the fire department for our report. Okay, we'll, we'll note that. Yeah, just that, like I said, I just think it's important for the township and you guys, and certainly I won't take up a bunch of your time and we're wasting. Not hurting us at all. We, <laughs> we're trust not trying me, I love to, your yeah, reports. Yeah. We're not trying to uh, cut you, you know, trying to stop you from speaking and, and giving us the, the – um, the news between each meeting and the meeting, we just, we were just fine lining, just kind of gone through, like Kyle said, whoever, whoever didn't have really anything to say, then we could just go ahead and approve them. And whoever had, whoever wanted to speak would have the opportunity to speak. That's all. I got you. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying that. I appreciate it. Uh, I, 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 okay, Joe. So. All right. Thank you, man. Have a good evening. Yeah, it, it, thank you, Deputy Chief. This is this is Luke Revan. Apologies for the the way in which you appear textually on the agenda. Does he have it? Is the East Brandywine Fire his, Company, not the Luke, East Brandywine Town. We also have to hear his report. Oh, sorry for the interruption. No, I was I was just I, I'm okay with the report. I just wanted to make sure that we were heard. Um, the only thing we wanted to do was uh, pass our best wishes along. As you can understand here at the fire company, we are. Um, putting the challenges of the COVID virus head on. We've put uh, more lockdown uh, things in place at the firehouse that the firemen are aware of. And it's certainly a challenge moving forward to still uh, maintain the high level of service. But so far we've been able to do that. Thank you, Joe. If, I mean, you, if you want to, you have the, the time now. We're, we're, do you have anything else that you wanted to discuss? We're not trying to rush you. No, no, no. I'm, I, I'm fine. Uh, like I said, I, I, I'm good to go with it. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, then we'll go ahead and go ahead and uh, I'll make a motion to approve the um, East Brandywine Fire Company report for October 2020. Yep. So moved. Sounds good. Thank you, man. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Joe. <clears throat> Moving on to the proposal to rename the unnamed tributary of Culverton Run as Springton Creek. Um, Luke? Yeah, this is under the um, under old business because uh, it was previously an agenda item. Um, it, it was tabled at the last board of supervisors meeting. Um, the suggestion from Supervisor uh, Scribner was to solicit public feedback. Um, township staff hosted um, a entry on this on our township webpage. The the contact information provided for individuals wanting to make comment was supervisors at ebrandywine.org, which is a uh, email alias that sends the messages on to the three of you. So um, I must confess, I have not heard public comment, but then I wouldn't because it would have come directly to you gentlemen. Um, the proposal is um, from an individual to name a stream uh, uh, that is currently unnamed, located in the north and west portion of the township. Um, and the U.S. Board on Geographic Names solicits feedback from all the municipalities in the area where such a proposal is located. So this evening, I would um, uh, respectfully ask the board to advise staff to whether we should say that uh, 
um, the township is in support or opposed to the proposed name change, which would be Springton Creek. Is that a, um, Mr. Collins who popped up, is that a question that he wouldn't ask for this agenda item? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I must have missed that. Did you see there was a That's why you're talking, I just saw it, yeah. Popped up for a second on the screen. Uh, I believe it's, I don't, I think it was maybe. Allen's. He just said, uh, added a question. I'm not sure if it's agenda related to this or just or maybe something else coming up. Uh, it's it's my determination that the question isn't related to this current agenda item. Okay. But there right. is a question added from a, a Mr. Collins. Okay. Um, I, I have no problem personally. Uh, yeah, and question. I think they're just looking for uh, township feedback, uh, not necessarily a, a vote. But I, I again, nothing, uh, unless someone were to tell me otherwise that it's there's, there's something wrong with it, I don't have a problem either. Yeah, so we, won't, we won't oppose it. Um, Luke, do you, I mean, I agree. I don't think there's a motion for that. Just the direction saying we're okay with it. All right, I will. I will return the form to the U.S. Board on Geographic Names, indicating we have no objection to the rename. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. And let's move on to uh, new business: adopting a proposed 2021 budget and permission to advertise the same for a public inspection. Uh, Luke again. Yeah, we had an, an advertised um, a, a board meeting, a special meeting on Tuesday of this week. It was a budget workshop. Um, there are just four changes to the agenda to the to the draft budget that appeared before you in your workshop in the new one. Would you like me to summarize the changes? If you want to briefly summarize them, I mean, okay. They they had to do with uh, all all personnel expenditures. So we're going to talk about um, the 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 way in which our budget is divided. Um, there's a three-digit number, and then there's a decimal, and then there's a two-digit number. The, the three-digit would refer to the department, and the two would, would refer to the specific expense. So we're going to talk about four department line items for salaries. So I'd start with um, for uh, manager, the line item is 400 dot no, I'm sorry, 401.12. That used to be broken down into um, all the individuals whose salaries made up that, um, that line item. They have been consolidated into a single entry. The next entry is for um, uh, secretary, treasurer, um, line item 405.12. Um, likewise, what had been um, salary for multiple individuals is now consolidated into a single line item. Next is line item 410.12, uh, which is the police department's salaries and wages. Um, again, had been multiple individuals and were consolidated into a single line item. And, and then lastly, Uh, it's going to be similar for, for public works, which is 430.12, had been multiple line items and is consolidated into a single line item. Um, I think uh, what the second class township code requirements are um, for the board this evening is that a preliminary budget must be advertised for public inspection prior to adopting a final budget. That action must be taken 20 days prior to adopting a final um, uh, a budget and a budget must be adopted before the end of the year, December 31st. So the action item this evening, the board is, or the staff is seeking, is to advertise this budget as available for public inspection. The rationale for the changes I discussed earlier also pertain to second class township requirements. Um, if changes are made to individual line items in excess of a certain proportion, I believe off the top of my head it's 10%, um, an av a budget must be re-advertised um, prior to taking a vote. 
And so by consolidating those line items, um, th there is more leeway to make changes to those line items without needing to re-advertise. That is the conclusion of my report on the changes before you this evening. And so I will make a motion to adopt a proposed 2021 preliminary budget and permission to advertise the same for public inspection. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. For all the members of the public, uh, this draft budget will be available in the township office beginning tomorrow. And the website. <clears throat> Thank you. Let's move on to subdivision and zoning applications. Um, the calls on Plank Farm sketch plan. Uh, I believe Vic Kelly, is he uh, promoted? Please stand by. Sure. All right, I've sent invitations to become presenters to uh, Mr. Mostetler and Mr. Kelly. How are you guys doing? Hi, Vic. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. Did you uh, also let John Jarros in as well? Happy to do it. Okay, thank you. John, are you in? John Mosteller here. We're waiting for John Jaros. No problem. Do any of you gentlemen anticipate having any um, um, thing you would like to project for the audience? Uh, I think Lisa had the plans. Uh, that we had sent in, is that correct? Yeah, so the, the board has a physical plan set in their packet. Um, if you would like, I'd be happy to, to load, you know, whatever document you refer to. Yeah, the November 3rd, the November 3rd sketch plan was the most current one that we discussed with the Planning Commission. So if you have that available, Luke, that would be great. And I believe I'm in at least by audio, gentlemen. Can you hear me? Yes, we, we can. Thank you. So I, I guess I would let John give a little uh, intro and I'll jump in if we need any of the backstory or if you have any questions specifically and we'll kind of run from there. That's fine. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I am land use counsel to the applicants. Um, this is the 22 acre McCausland Plank Farm that is proposed uh, for development uh, it's 90 townhouse units. The property is located in the R2 and TND overlay, which is how you get the 90 unit townhouse development being proposed. Uh, as Vic said, I think the plan that most recently has been generated by Vic as a sketch plan is a November 3rd, 2020 plan. And just to give you a Reader's Digest recap, um, I, I believe my clients have been at this for quite some time <clears throat> with proposed sketch plans uh, for the development. And until recently, those sketch plans had illustrated a Reeseville Road extension uh, across the northwestern part of the tract, which impacted their ability to get on-site uh, sewer disposal on the property. Um, they also took time to meet with the Pulte townhome uh, residents to our northwest to try and glean uh, their concerns with regard to the proposed development of this tract and incorporate as many of those uh, concerns or trying to address those as many of those concerns as they could. 
Um, suffice it to say, we got to a point in discussions with the planning commission where it became evident that the prior sketch plan that showed the Reeseville Road extension um, was just not going to come to fruition with all the different variables at play. So what we ultimately ended up doing was developing the most recent sketch plan dated November 3rd that does not have a definitive Reeseville Road extension shown on it. And it gives us the ability to obtain the 150% on-site sewage disposal that the township ordinance requires that we provide. Um, what it also does, and again, although there's not a defined Reeseville Road right-of-way across the northwestern portion of the track, um, my clients have said that they are willing to grant a easement uh, to the township uh, in order to try and accommodate a future road, Reeseville Road extension, uh, should it eventually come to fruition. We we have we're information that as you go across this property, across the Pulte townhome development, and then to the Northwest, there are certainly some hurdles with respect to how that Reeseville Road extension would ultimately work its way out to Bondsville Road. So long-winded way of saying the current sketch plan that is before uh, the township or that we're asking for comment and perhaps direction on uh, accommodates the needs that we need to address for our 90 unit townhome development. And as I said, it also provides a, a future road connection for the township should they choose to exercise it at some point in the future. And lastly, I think it also gives us the ability to try and address many of the concerns that have been uh, voiced by the Pulte townhome development. So with that having been said, we are looking for uh, direction from the Board of Supervisors who is ultimately going to make this uh, decision because we would be back before you with a conditional use application for these 90 unit townhome, uh, townhomes. So we're here to discuss uh, any questions, concerns the supervisors may have with respect to the proposal before you, but we need to get moving on this. As I said, it's been quite a period of time. That my clients have been uh, after this as far as uh, the sketch. And as uh, I stated earlier, the next step would be to apply for conditional use approval and move forward. That's all I have. Uh, if the board has any questions, we're happy to try and entertain them. Which sketch are we looking at? Um, all right, so you said that the most recent one, the plan November 3rd, I have the November 3rd, I have an October 5th, and I have an existing conditions plan in my packet. So I should be looking at the November 3rd one? That is correct. Yeah, and the big difference, Kyle, was that the November 3rd one, there was a comment from the traffic engineer and I believe the township engineer questioning uh, whether the Reeseville Road would be, uh, the Reeseville Road extension would still be accessible. And that's where we wanted to demonstrate, yeah, we're willing to provide the easement space up in the north portion of the site. Uh, and that can be done at a future date, similar to what uh, the, the arrangement that you have with Pulte on the Apple Cross open space. Uh, from that point, it's uncertain. Uh, both those properties were were approached and uh, neither were willing to continue the Reeseville Road extension there. So that's why we're just giving the flexibility back to the township. All right, so in your easement would end on your property parcel, correct? There was no easement past your property that you guys were able to acquire, correct? There is no, there is not. It would only be on our property. However, you already have the easement on the uh, Apple Cross Village open space on the north side of that that development. Andy Heimer. 
Krishna. Now, the other thing I just want to kind of make clear is that the, the sketch before you shows the townhouses on our property uh, closer to the Apple Cross Village than the prior, some prior sketches that had been shown with the Planning Commission. And the, and the thought there was that we would need less relief on the riparian buffer, which was a big discussion item with the Planning Commission and with the adjacent Applecross Village neighbors. And uh, the thought was for us to potentially shift those townhouses to the south by about 35 feet or, or so, trying to buffer the Applecross development from our development. And what that would require is some relief on the riparian buffer. The way the ordinance is now written, uh, you need a 100-foot riparian buffer uh, in the TND1, you don't have that riparian buffer, but in the TND2, you do. And I would just wanted to point out that the Conservation District and DEP both only require a 50-foot buffer. So our thought was that we could design this development to adhere to that 50-foot buffer and uh, give the Applecross Village townhomes a larger tree, uh, tree buffer or um, hedgerow there's an existing tree line along the back of their units that could be preserved so that was one of the other major design elements that we wanted to try to get some direction on I'm, i am listening to you i'm just going to step up and look at the full-size sketch plans that's on our table in front of us so i'm going to get up to look at that that's why i'm stepping away all right <clears throat> no, we do not. Th though that's another thing that needs your signature up there. Yeah. Never mind. That's not your development. That's another one I thought I could see. Have you guys have have you guys dropped off a full sketch? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. This sketch has been presented. Yes. No, I'm saying a full size sketch. We're looking at about a 15 by 18 sketch plan. Did you guys drop off a, a set of full plans or no? I would have to check with Scott. I don't know whether we did them all digitally or not. I certainly can. If you want, you know, if you need hard copies, we'd be happy to send them over. I, I don't remember what your what your policy was. And how did you guys make out with the planning commission? Um, I don't know. I think there are a few planning commission members. I don't want to speak for them, but I, I think they, we've gone back and forth with them. And one of the biggest concerns was trying to get the, meet all the objectives of the code and still provide that Reeseville Road extension. They had requested that we go and pursue the adjacent properties to the north and west of the Pulte development uh, that was done. The, the, the sellers or the owners of the property were not interested in selling. So that became kind of a moot point. We, you know, we, we can't make the connection. So that's where we said we've got to kind of uh, look at how we can provide access to our development and still maintain the township's ability to uh, pursue that Reeseville Road extension. But we can't We've we've spent over like John said we've spent over a year getting to this point, and it's become obvious that that we can't make every uh, all aspects of this work. So we're going to go forward with what we can make work, and that's why we're looking at uh, some of the fine tune items like where do we put you know, you know what are the what is the township willing to do with regard to buffer? I, I'd say that the planning commission seemed to uh, mm -hmm. most of the planning commission seemed to agree with. 
the Applecross neighbors that providing the buffer between the two developments is uh, is a benefit, and we had to look more globally at the whole at the whole site. Um, and the riparian buffer being reduced down to 50 feet still meets state, still meets county regulations. So uh, it's not a, an exceptional value or high quality watershed. So it, it seems to uh, meet the guidelines anyway for everything. So, and, and again, that seemed to kind of check all those boxes. Uh, as, as John stated earlier, with this plan now, we have about 175% of the drip area that we need for sewer. The 150 was is required by code. Uh, the original sketches were about 125% when the Reeseville Road extension was going through. So um, we do provide more than sufficient area for the sewer drip area. Let me also interject one, one of the challenges we faced with um, a couple of the planning commission members was having them understand that although the township may have put on a master plan several years ago this Reeseville Road extension that extends through our property and a couple of the other properties to the northwest that doesn't automatically um, convert that to any right of the township to put the road through the property absent some type of eminent domain condemnation proceeding in which the township would have to provide fair market value for that roadway or that right of way. So we were we were somewhat challenged to get them to understand because I think they were somewhat disappointed not to see that Reeseville Road extension that had been on prior sketch plans come across the northwestern corner of our property. But again, uh, and I'm sure the supervisors understand this, and I'd welcome Mr. Jonas's comments now or at some point in the future with respect to it, but we had to look at we had what we had available to us and what issues we could ultimately address under the code. And that 150% on-site sewage disposal requirement is a driving force with respect to this development and how it's laid out. So in order to accommodate that, as we said earlier, we've arrived at this iteration of the sketch plan. And all the, although there is no designated right of way for that Reeseville Road extension, as we've said earlier, we would be willing to provide an easement through that northwestern portion of the property. But if, in fact, the township were to follow through with that, we would need some type of accommodation with regard to that what to do with that on-site sewage disposal at some point in the future. So um, the question I guess I have is we have the sewage pumping station, I believe, right on uh, on, on the road in front of you guys on um, Bondsville. Is that met capacity already? Is that, is that what the sewer authority is asking for, for on-site? No, it's it's more the, the reapplication. We would have to get into that pump station. It would be pumped over to the treatment plant treated and then the, the clean effluent would be pumped back and would be applied uh, drip irrigation up in this area. And I should point out that we did uh, on prior sketches show that we have the ability to at least handle you know, more than 100% of the sewer that we need for our development for the 90 units. Does that make sense, Kyle? Yep. <clears throat> and our um, Nate, Nate or Andy has not reviewed the November 3rd sketch plan, just the October 15th. Yeah. And the only difference there was, and I think they both commented on it, was the Reeseville Road extension. So I, and you can see it's on, it's on there very lightly, just as a hypothetical, that's where it could go. So that was just in response to their comments. Nothing else changed. It was just like it, we were willing to offer that area uh, either an easement or offer that area, uh, dedicate that area to the township. So the township has the ability to design that any way they see fit. But again, like John said, you'd have to work around the sewer, but we would be able to accommodate 100% of the sewer that would not impact this area for certain. The area shown 
grayscaled on the uh, for the extension. In fact, that wasn't it one hundred twenty five percent. It was about one hundred twenty five percent the way we originally had it designed. Yep. I do remember that. <clears throat> and like I said earlier, without that road, we're at one hundred seventy five percent or so. So we we exceed the code by some, by quite a bit. And is this um, as far as the municipal authority? Have they included this concept in their um, update to the 537 plan that we're current, they're currently uh, pursuing at this point? Uh, without knowing, too, we haven't had any, I, I personally haven't, I don't think the board has had any discussions uh, or heard feedback from the municipal authority regarding, you know, our 150% uh, requirement, requirement for a set aside um, as part of our subdivision requirements, SALDO, but also, you know, obviously if, you, if you're putting a road in and you're, and it's taking in space of, you know, potential potential drip or um, you know, that, that obviously, you know, you should be, I agree, I think that you should, you know, you can't have both um, in my opinion. Um, but have you had any word from them on their feedback? We had met with them a couple times early on and we were looking at uh, trying to come up with the short, if there was any shortfall at all, where would we be able to do that offsite? Mm -hmm. I think the point here would be that, hey, we would still be able to provide about 125%, but if it was the township that was making the the change or whatever where, where, where they were extending that road, they control all the extra sewer. And we know that there's some extra sewer over on sewer capacity or available drip area over on the Weaver tract. Uh, we would have, like I said, 125% here. I know there's some issues at or there's some availability at Hideaway. That's all kind of rolled into the 537. That way it kind of puts the onus back on the township to decide where and when they need it. Yes, and that's that's to um, potentially um, recommission pump station B to to get your fluent over to Hideaway. That's one option, and um, there's extra uh, beds that are for their 50% set aside back in the day. Um, yeah, and one thing we did hear from them was Hideaway, as far as we were, as far as our development was concerned, they didn't think that was, that one made sense. It was more for, I think, some failing systems in some of the existing neighborhoods. Uh, so so part of that became unavailable to us, which is, again, why we kind of said, all right, well, we, we've got to provide that 150% on site. And with this plan, we do that. I think um, I think I, I would probably want to see. I, mean, I hate to keep putting it off, but I would like to see um, you know, the planning commission have our solicitor uh, weigh in, give us, give the board you know, their opinion on on where we're at, as well as having uh, Andy um, kind of take a quick look at the sketch plan and just do a quick review. I know there's only a few changes, but just to, I would feel more comfortable to have reviews on the plan that you, you know, the reviews to the board prior to us making, you know, any comments or suggestions. I would think. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Andy issue a, a review letter, Andy Heinrich? Andy did. It was before the November third uh, sketch. In fact, the, the sketch was done kind of in response to Andy's comment, and the primary comment was that we don't take the Reeseville Road extension into consideration, which is why we added it. Other than that, though, there wasn't anything insurmountable in Andy's review, correct? Um, no, I mean, a lot of it is the next step, dealing with PennDOT out at 322, how the intersection is going to be aligned and that sort of thing. Right. That's all future design. Gotten feedback from from the Apple Cross HOA regarding um, whether or not they're going to permit uh, your, your project to tie into to their existing um, uh, existing townhomes, the 96 over there now. I yeah, the, the discussion there, uh, Jason, was that that all of our connections would be for emergency purposes only. So there would not be an, a live or active intersection or a connection between the two. 
Um, they were fearful of, of cut through traffic and that sort of thing. So the two would somewhat stand alone. Uh, however, for emergency purposes, they would both now have the ability to have a second access point. So it kind of alleviates the issue that exists in Apple Cross now where they only have one, one access point out to Bonsville Road. It gives them that second emergency access. Yeah, I, I like the emergency access. It works both ways. Um, so I don't have a problem with that, obviously. Yeah. Um, have you have you had a your uh, scope meeting with PennDOT yet? See what no, 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 no. Again, we this is why we wanted to get this general layout done or agreed upon so that we can go to that next step. Get into the into the you know the full fledged design. Meet with PennDOT. Uh, do more test pits. Do do all the you know the the regular engineering that's required. Yeah, I think that um, for me, I think that I would like to have a little bit of feedback from our solicitor uh, who was present at the planning commission meeting just to kind of see, um, see what he recommends or what he has any issues with. Um, uh, Andy's or Nate's um, any issues they have I don't have any questions other than um, I would just if, if I could get a full copy um, um, of this plan that that's my only question I'll be sure to send over a half dozen uh, full-size sheets then to the township I guess if we could, Luke, if we could get um, Mark or, uh, or Zachary to kind of look into this and provide us some feedback um, before the December work session. Uh, Zach is joining us live. Uh, Zach, did you have any direction to the board relative? To the sketch plan. I don't. I don't have any specific direction at this point. Um, we can take a look at it and provide feedback, um, or we can provide our comments feedback to the board uh, for the for that work session. I think that's fine. And just so we're clear, what is that work session meeting date in December? The would be. Um, hold on one second. It'll be December third. Um, two weeks from now. Okay. Not, not we be, yeah, the weekend, the, the weekend after, I'm sorry, the Thursday after Thanksgiving. And we'd be happy to talk to either Mr. Jonas or anyone else uh, offline um, with regard to any information they need with regard to under, understanding the sketch plan, the most recent iteration of the sketch plan and the issues associated with it. We, we hold that out. Yeah, I would I would yeah. make that recommendation as well that maybe um, <clears throat> that, that conference call can be had with Mr. Jonas and you guys so that some of these questions can get hashed out before the meeting so that we're we're in a better spot. But sure. uh, as I said, I, for me, um, um, I, I'm looking at a 12 by 18 plant blueprint right here, and and uh, I'm just being honest with you, I can't even make out any any of the details other than um the potential stormwater management facilities and the uh and the drip fields there's i i can obviously tell where the houses are but i can't tell um there's no numbers or, or 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 letters that are visible um other than the the heavy letters for the for the drip field and the stormwater understood we'll get those plans right up to the township thank you Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd bring your attention to the fact that a number of individuals from the public have 
asked to make public comment. Yeah, that's if we could we can take a couple questions as regarding this this uh, agenda. Yeah, item. pertaining to this agenda item, yeah. That's fine. To um, we can start with Good evening, Mr. Buxala. Can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. I'm sorry for joining the meeting late. For some reason, I had 7.30 in my mind, which is typically been a typical uh, evening meeting time for uh, Board of Supervisors for some time, so I apologize for joining late. Um, I would just like to give input from the perspective of uh, the Planning Commission, and uh, the general consensus of the Planning Commission is that we do not support this plan. And um, the, the Riesel Road extension is on the official map of the township and the MCP provides uh, some protection with regard to the route of that road. And uh, Mark Jonas has uh, already provided uh, the Planning Commission feedback along those lines. Uh, additionally, Nate Klein has um, a number of issues that he's identified. He has reviewed this plan. Um, and the concept of having an easement uh, go across uh, the edge of the drip fields, uh, I, I, I can't see where that makes sense. If, if the drip fields are installed um, to la later go back and install a road uh, that um, affects that, that those drip fields, uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so I just wanna provide uh, some feedback with, res with regard to the perception or the perspective of the planning commission, uh, we do not see this uh, favorably. And the planning commission has worked with the applicant. Uh, we've shown a great deal of flexibility. We're willing to step back the, uh, the 100 foot the riparian buffer line to the 50 foot riparian buffer line in recognition of the stormwater basins uh, fulfilling the role of uh, what the riparian buffer does. Uh, and, and we've tried to show as much flexibility uh, as we can. Um, but in my view, personally, and I, uh, we didn't take a formal vote on the commission, but in my view, uh, this is um, not the top option that's been presented to us. Um, and with regard to uh, the drip field capacity, waste uh, capacity, uh, it was my understanding that they were going to go back and meet with the municipal authority to uh, talk through that issue. Um, they've had one meeting with the municipal authority uh, this past summer, so June or July, and uh, they haven't uh, met with them to discuss um, what the what the real options are to address this 125% versus 150%. I, I know that uh, Mike Corbin has consistently stated that the municipal authority does not approve uh, plans that have less than 150% of the capacity, and that has been the stumbling block uh, with regard to what I view as the, the most favorable plan, which offers 125% capacity. But uh, that's something that um, I think the applicant should be going back to the municipal authority and, um, and uh, researching that in some detail to find a solution to see if 125% will work for the municipal authority. I can't speak for the municipal authority. Um, so those are my views and I, I agree with you, Jason. Um, uh, you haven't seen the minutes of the Planning Commission meeting. You haven't gotten input from the township solicitor. Um, I agree that uh, you, sh you should um, get the advice that uh, your advising boards are, are providing and, uh, and have that information to uh, consider in your decision. Vic, we're on schedule now to go back to the um, sewer authority for the next meeting, correct? Yeah, I was going to say, if I can if I can respond to some of that, I, I'd like to. Um, we had tried to get on the agenda for tomorrow morning uh, with the sewer authority, and we have had some meetings outside of the general sewer authority meeting, so we have been in discussion with them. I've talked to Joe Baldez a number of times, um, and they canceled the meeting for tomorrow, so we're on the agenda for the December meeting. But I also want to, I guess more importantly, point out that 
the, 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 the easement that would be offered could be offered and we could provide, and this is the point I was trying to make, in the northern section, we could provide the 100% of the sewer that drip area that we need exclusive or outside of where this easement could be provided, which is why we've demonstrated before that the Reeseville Road extension works, providing about 125%. So clearly to, to, uh, to have the 100% that, that is needed for, for our development, that could be constructed, put in the ground and built and unimpacted by a future road extension by Reeseville. But it just wouldn't be uh, arbitrarily holding us not up now where we can't meet the 150 and we're preserving land that is may or may not ever be used. I mean, we're being penalized both ways around is, is the way that we've seen it. Well, I'll add to that. Um, the municipal authority, your, your disposal area is is a key issue. The other issue is whether these uh, basins for stormwater um, runoff uh, will work as advertised. I, you know, you're down by the creek there. We don't know where the water table is. Um, you could get into this and discover that these water basins aren't going to be able to do what you need them to do. And this plan is um, not going to work. You're going to have to redo the whole thing anyway. So. You know, there's a, there's a few pieces of information here, key pieces of information, ground truthing that need to be done to be sure that this is really a feasible layout. Well, we understand and, and, that. And Nate Klein has commented on this as well, our, our, our township engineer. We, we understand that. But we, we before we get into the, the hardcore engineering, which is what I stated earlier, we need to have the general layout. So we, we anticipate that the next step, if, if this is the general layout, we know that this is, you know, we're at A and we need to get to Z. So if it doesn't work, that's the risk that we're taking with, if we don't get NPDES approval, we don't get township approval, obviously a shovel doesn't go in the ground. We don't build it. So we've got to demonstrate all that stuff, but we need to start with the general layout before we get into the weeds on everything else. We plan on doing all the soil testing, we obviously have to make it meet NPDS standards. We have to make make it meet the township standards. So all that is part of the planning approval process, and we understand that. Okay. Jim, do you have any other questions or comments at this time? No, I, I don't. I, uh, I just agree that that would be a good idea to uh, – to uh, see see Nate's latest review letter on this plan, get input from the solicitor, and uh, see what the minutes of the planning commission say, so that you can fully consider everybody's uh, evaluation of, of uh, the information presented. Understood. Appreciate your comments, Jim. And your input. All right, I have. Uh, one other individual is asked to um, address the board on this agenda item, and that is uh, Ms. Alvarez. Can you hear us? <coughs> Hello, Ms. Alvarez. Okay. Um, good evening. Hi. How are you this evening? Good. How are you doing? Um, good. I just wanted to bring up the point that um, the, at the last meeting that the Planning Commission was in favor of, of decreasing the by prevent the variant buffer and increasing the buffer bin between the, the new development and Apple Cross. Um, as a matter of fact, last week, uh, one of the gentlemen, I forget his name, from the Planning Commission came out. He's he was working with um, the historic site down on Bondsville Road. Um, and I spoke to him for quite some time um, just discussing, you know, he got to see the small yards that we have behind our developments that butt up to the cornfield. Um, so that increased buffer would really be appreciative um, to the people here that the houses along um, village towns that butt up to that cornfield. Because without that extra buffer, we are literally almost, you know, like the backyards are like, uh, so close. And part of the reason we bought these properties, you know, and we know that we understand that there is going to be a development and we were, Pulte had told us that this 
was going to remain a cornfield for years and years and years. We understand, okay, so that's not happening. Um, but we just ask that maybe, you know, you can preserve some of that tree line and that extra space for us. I, I understand your concern. Yeah, and I have to say, thank you. I do understand your concern and um, it is a valid concern. Um, and that's something that we will take in consideration with the uh, planning commission and as, as well as the um, input from our solicitor. Um, see if we could, you know, if this does move forward, if, if we can, you know, appease, uh, would, would, would be one of our requests to. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. We we've had so much difficulty with poultry. I mean, they they left our development a year and a half ago, and you know we have sidewalks that need to be fixed. Our roads haven't been paved yet. We are landscaping. We have trees that are you know that are endangered uh, of falling on on you know we had a, um, had them come through and do an assessment of our trees, and there's trees that that are dead and we just had a, have had a lot of problems and Pulte has just literally kind of walked away from our development. So, you know, we've been kind of disappointed by all, all that's gone on with Pulte and then for, and then, uh, then, you know, they told, in fact, we paid premiums for houses to butt up to these um, cornfields. And, and again, you know, we understand that their uh, development's going to come in. So, we just ask that you please consider giving us that extra space. Yes, absolutely. And then, um, and we can actually probably, Luke, if you want to just, you know, have that include on a list to do is to reach out to have someone reach out to Pulte and address um, Ms. Alvarez's concerns regarding Pulte. Um, that way, you know, that can be addressed. And then we'll take your consideration. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem at all. Thank you for your comment. I have just one other individual that has requested to pose questions relative to this. And um, as, a, as a matter of accommodation, um, it, it's an interesting question. We, we, we limit our, our, our comment um, chronologically, but I have a series of questions related to this development that were submitted via the text feature here, and this individual cannot use um, the, uh, the 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 audio speaker system. So I don't know exactly how you want to approach this. Um, would you like me to share a few questions that we received via the the text feature? Sure, that's fine. Okay, I I, I have no idea. We're kind of an unprecedented territory. This is a a twenty twenty problem to have. Please stand by. <laughs> All right, I think everybody can, can see the question. The question for the developer, does the plan comply with the township's official map? Big, I'll let you answer that concerning the TND2 zoning that we're under. Uh, yeah, actually, under the TND2 zoning, we're entitled to 152 units, I believe. So um, as far as zoning compliance, we're less than two-thirds of the n potential number of units as permitted by code. Question for the developer, what zoning waivers do you need? Do you know at this time? Uh, we know a few of them. Um, we need a special exception to go through the steep slopes. We need a conditional use for the use in a, in a TND2. Um, we've talked about the riparian buffer modification. And actually, I, I don't know that I'd call that zoning relief because it's there's there's the ability for the township to modify that portion of the code. Um, and as you guys know, zoning would require either variances or special exceptions. Waivers would be from Saldo, and it's it's too early to say what we might need, but I suspect there will be a you know a host of waivers that may be needed 
uh, just from the fact that it's a townhouse development. Uh, I think we've run into some things in the past where the codes are a little inconsistent between townhouse developments and uh, and single families where they cross over and it's just it's not really applicable to a townhouse development. So at this time, we don't know them all. This is more, you know, again, we're, we're at the sketch plan phase and we'll know a lot more when we get into the design. Uh, we'll, we'll be doing all the test pits and we'll be doing all the uh, road grading and building grading and, and uh, essentially all the utility design. And that's when we really get into the meat of the ordinance and we'll know what relief we need then. I think I have one more that pertains to this particular development. Uh, question for the developer, how does the stormwater basin get maintained and who does this work? Well, there would be an HOA that establishes uh, what's needed. I mean, I think probably all throughout the Apple Cross development, those basins are probably maintained by different sections of the, uh, of the HOA. I'm not sure what the exact language is, but it would be whatever language satisfies the township. And it would be the HOA's responsibility to maintain it um, under the new NPDS, and and I'm sure under some of the township code, there are requirements for O and M operation and maintenance agreements that have to be signed and recorded. They will be made part of this plan set. Yeah, I I think as a just as a matter of of, of public policy, we we probably need to set a, a set of rules so it's it's clear relative to moderating um, public comment on the number of ways that questions can be submitted online or you know how how do we how do we ration that? Um, but I believe that is all the questions that pertain to this development at this time relative from this individual. Okay. Thank you for those questions. If, if Mr. Collins does have any other questions, he could feel free to email the board and we can have them um, <clears throat> we don't you know so we that way you have a uh, little bit of time to answer your questions ain't anything so um so i guess i'm at the point now that i think that i would like to see um you guys can't get on the <clears throat> the municipal authorities meeting tomorrow the next one is in december um, yeah, we, we actually tried to get it on tomorrow. They canceled the meeting. So we are on the ad December agenda, I believe. And then maybe maybe a, we could get our solicitor and, and, and you guys on the conference call and just kind of work through some details after they give us some update. And that way we will have a little bit more direction, you know, at the December work session um, two Thursdays from now. We appreciate that. And we assume we'll be placed on that work session agenda for December 3rd. Yes. We can go ahead and um, we'll have that. We'll have to do it right now. Thank you. We appreciate your time. We look forward to Thank speaking you with much. you on December 3rd. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, gentlemen, before you go, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. This is really unprecedented for me. I just want to make sure that I'm giving everybody the opportunity to comment. I do have one more question, and that pertains to the ownership of the roads. Can you briefly describe who would be the final owner of the roads in your, your, your current plan? The current plan, all the internal streets would be owned by the HOA. Except for the Reeseville extension of that. If whatever portion of the Reeseville Road extension is, is there would be offered for dedication. John's correct, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time and um, patience. And Thank, thank you. you. We look forward to seeing you in December. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Good night. I'm moving on. Is there any comment? A comment on non agenda items. We have a we have a similar situation where I've got uh, um, the same individual who has uh, a technical difficulty. So um, these are some questions that came up that I, I will project for the board. Um, Mr. Chairman, you are the moderator of public comment, so um, please advise me if um, there's any. If, if 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 we've reached a limit, because there's a few that have come in here, so please stand by.
All right, this is a non-agenda item. Executive sessions for litigation must include parties to a lawsuit and docket number to violation of, and I presume the rest of that thought is the Sunshine Law. I don't remember us at, at this point, at this meeting announcing that we had an executive session. So does the board have any comment? Yes, um, we don't discuss lawsuits um, in public meetings or, or litigation. Um, and that would take place in executive session. Um, few topics that is acceptable to um, for strategy and whatnot in exec session, and we would announce that at our next meeting that we did meet. So you wouldn't have to have parties there. It, it could be board and the and the uh, lawyers or whoever we would need to discuss that litigation. Right. I, I if if I be so bold as to paraphrase i think where this is um where the where the uh where the the, the citizen is is quest when we make an announcement that we had an executive session for the purposes of discussing litigation um the uh, i believe the comment is that we should announce the lawsuit the particular lawsuit that we had that conversation relative to um i'm not sure i think that's something that would have to be uh, answered by an attorney. I'm not a I'm not a lawyer, so I I can't answer that. Um, uh, Zach, if you want to comment on that really quick, I mean, I'll just uh, I'll just say that uh, I'll look into I'll look into that, and and we can get back to the board about whether we need to start doing that. Yeah, yeah we'll go ahead and do that, and then uh, Mr. Collins, we can get that answer to you if you want to email the board so we have your. I, I certainly, I, I don't mean any disrespect to uh, Mr. Collins and your questions. Um, uh, I, I, there's a number of ones that repeat themselves. And um, so with. Um, if we can get a list for. And then just get yeah, I, I think it would probably be best that, that I, I'd mentioned in my introduction to one of the agenda items that there is an email address. It is supervisors at ebrandywine.org. And um, that will automatically distribute your inquiry to all three supervisors. I would, yeah, I would encourage, I would encourage him to, to reach out in that way. Okay. Yeah. I have uh, no further. Uh, yeah, Jason, I would like to make a non agenda item yeah. if I could. Sure, go ahead, Jim. Okay. Uh, I, I just uh, personally uh, want to recognize uh, Scott Pearsall for his. Uh, exceptional service as a township manager for over 27 years. Um, I first met him in 2002 uh, before I made my purchase in the township. And uh, I went in to talk to him uh, because I found uh, that the neighboring farm was going to be developed and I wanted to learn more about it. And he made time for me and frankly told me more than I needed to know. And, and uh, that seems to have been his modus operandi for um, all the time that I've, I've known him. I have uh, became involved with the township in 2005 and I've had a working relationship with him since. And I think, um, you know, he's done a, a terrific job. Um, he's uh, been consistent and always gets back to you. Um, uh, he's maintained connections with our neighboring municipalities through uh, Cato and otherwise. He's kept the township staff and volunteers current on training and made us aware of uh, the current trends in uh, planning. Um, he's, he always seems to be on top of things. And I, I think uh, personally, from my perspective, um, he's, he's done a terrific job. So uh, I, I say uh, thank you to Scott for, for your service. Um, he was dedicated right up to the end. Um, I, I recall getting uh, email responses from him at three o'clock in the morning. I, I would send him an, e an email late evening expecting uh, that he would uh, return uh, my uh, email uh, in the morning and he, <laughs> he would respond at three o'clock in the morning. And that was before Luke came on board. So uh, he, he, would, he was completely dedicated 100% to servicing this township. And I, I for one, appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> And uh, connected to that, um, at your meeting on November 5th, um, you indicated that uh, you made a determination that uh, we only need one township manager. And you know that's, that's your decision, all well and good. I'm just curious uh, what went into that decision. Uh, did, did you 
take a look at the work tasks and uh, you're looking at a reorganization of those tasks? Or uh, did you uh, determine that uh, the work that Scott and Luke were doing um, uh, could be handled by one person? Well, <clears throat> I think that, um, you know, I want to thank you for your comments. And uh, as far as the board's uh, determination of majority of the board, majority of the board, um, that was something that you know we discussed um, in executive session because we don't normally speak about personnel problems or issues or any recommendations or positive things or negative things in public meetings. So at this time, we won't be um, discussing any personnel issues or decisions. But I do appreciate your comments. Well, I, that, that's that's a comment with regard to staffing level. And I, I guess, uh, you know, regardless of who is in those positions, do we need a, a township manager and assistant township manager? Or you, you've decided that the workload is such that we just need one manager. And I, I guess I'm curious in, under, in understanding um, what went into that decision other than uh, potential legal issues or, or whatever. Is I think that we the, the board majority of the board um, had after having discussions these things came to the conclusion that our size budget are not in need of um, a manager and, and that we wanted to uh, reorganize. Uh, I'm having trouble hearing you, Jason. I'm sorry. I said the board, the majority of the board had discussed and. Uh, with the size of our budget, we were, um, we had the majority of the board decided that the um, township was not in the need of a assistant manager and a manager. And so that's the decision that we made to go back to just one. Okay. You, you were just very brief about it on November 5th. And I, I thought there might be more uh, in the way of an explanation that would help, help me understand. That's all. Oh, um, well, this is something that, you know, that was part of our ordinance and um, to provide written notice. And um, so that's what we decided to do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is that, are there any other questions for non agenda items? Uh, no one else has reached out to me. That's the conclusion of non agenda items. Okay. Um, notices, I don't believe you. And do I have a motion to adjourn? Um, All in favor? Aye. Aye.